back in this video, we're going to go over eclipsed, anti, and gosh confirmations of new moon projections. Now, if you didn't watch my last videos on how to draw new moon projections or the practice problems, please watch that before watching this video because this is more like the advanced version of new moon projections. Now, there are different types of new, new moon projections because in reality, molecules, these functional groups, are rotating all around the molecule because single bonds are super flexible. So when we were drawing those OG new moon projections, we were drawing them as if they were static. None of the groups are rotating around. They were all 60 degrees away from each other. But the, in the real world, that's not, that's not what's happening. In the real world, these functional groups, these molecules are rotating all around the place because single bonds are super flexible. So there are different types of Newman projections. There are eclipsed, there are gosh, and there are anti. Now, eclipse is its own category. Now, gosh, anti, and our normal Newman projections fall under the staggered confirmation. So staggered confirmation is basically like an umbrella term to describe these three. And eclipse confirmation is its own category. So let's begin. So, in the beginning of the video, I put a little clip of Avatar The Last Airbender. If you've not watched that show, please watch it. It's such a good show. It's, it's honestly the best TV show I've ever seen in my life. If you've not watched it, I don't know what you're doing with your life. So please watch that. It's super good. So, in that sequence, I showed you that Aang and Sokka are looking for the solar eclipse too, so they know when to invite the, invade the Fire Nation. So, I superimposed the hydrogen on the sun and the moon, and you could tell that they were moving towards each other. Eventually, the moon would cover the sun. They would completely eclipse over each other. That's exactly what is happening in eclipse confirmations. What's going on here is the groups are essentially covering each other. They are eclipsing over each other. So the front molecules here are covering the back molecules. So this methyl group that's attached to the front carbon is eclipsing the back carbon completely. The hydrogen from the front carbon is completely eclipsing and blocking the hydrogen from the back carbon. Now, I know it doesn't look like this. When I draw this, I, I'm drawing them as they're side to side. But there's really no way to draw them that they are on top of each other. Okay, so that's why you draw them to the side like this, right? They're next to each other. They're not really next to each other. What they're in reality, they're on top of each other, but there's no good way to draw that. So you can see that they're really close to each other. This is the eclipse confirmation. This is also known as the highest energy confirmation. The reason this is important is because molecules, compounds that are higher in energy means they are less stable. The reason this is, is because when compounds, these functional groups, are close to each other, they are actually repelling each other. They hate each other. Functional groups, molecules, don't like to be next to each other. They don't. So when they get close to each other, they repel each other. And when they repel each other, it lets off a lot of energy. And when it lets off a lot of energy, it decreases stability. This means we won't really see the molecule like this in this confirmation. So think about like a fully charged battery for eclipse confirmations. Now, another, th another thing to keep in mind is hydrogens don't matter. So whenever we're dealing with eclipse confirmations or gosh confirmations or anti-confirmations, leave out the hydrogens. We do not care about them. What we care about are, is basically anything else, any methyl groups, ethyl groups, oxygens, nitrogens, phosphates, I don't, whatever it is, as long as it's not a hydrogen. We do not care about hydrogen. And the reason is because hydrogens are very small and they don't really exhibit that much of a force, that much energy. So then let's move on to staggered confirmations. We have our OG Newman projections where every group is 60 degrees away from each other no matter what the, mol what the functional group is. So we are used to that. What we're not used to is gosh confirmations. So this is also known as the medium energy state. This is when the functional groups, the bigger ones, not the hydrogens, are 60 degrees away from each other. 
So they're right next to each other. They're adjacent to each other, not on top of each other like the eclipse, but they are next to each other. So they look like a normal Newman projection, but the bigger groups, like the methyl groups or the ethyl groups, are 60 degrees away from each other. So they're next to each other. Okay? So this is known as Gauche conformations. They are a medium instability. Yeah, they're stable, but not the most stable. The most stable are anti-conformations. This is when the big functional groups, or the big molecules like methyls, ethyls, oxygen, nitrogens, are 180 degrees away from each other, or on opposite ends of the Newman projection. This is the lowest energy state, or the most stable, because they're too far away from each other to be interacting with each other. They're not really repelling each other, because they're just too far away from, them, from each other. That's why. Now, a common question was, what happens if I do this? So say I do this and uh, let me, so let me put this as a hydrogen. Let me put this as a methyl group. Let me put this as a hydrogen here and put this as a, put this as a methyl here. Okay. So what happens if we have this? Now they have the methyl group here and the methyl group here and the hydrogens are here, right? So we don't care about the hydrogens, right? We don't care about these. Is this an anti-conformation? The answer is yes. Just because they're not on the top and the bottom does not mean that you know, it has to be anti. They are anti because this and this are 180 degrees away from each other. Okay, so this is 180 degrees. So as long as they're on opposite ends, this is anti, okay? So let's do some practice problems here. Consider this molecule, so this molecule right here. So the two questions are rotating the carbon three and carbon four bond, what is the lowest energy conformation? And letter B is rotating the carbon three and carbon four bond, what is the highest energy conformation? So what we're gonna actually do is solve both of these together. We can actually solve A and then directly solve B from that. So it's pretty cool. So step one. You need to draw the OG Newman projection. So please watch my last videos if, you're not, if you don't know how to do that. So, I know when you looked at this question, you're probably like rotating the carbon three, carbon four bond. I don't know how to do that. What does this mean? I'm super lost. Don't worry, it's actually super simple. What this means right here, this sentence or this phrase right here, all it's telling you is where the arrow is gonna be. So where's the perspective going to be? So I mentioned the carbon three, carbon four bond. So that means that perspective, the arrow, is going to be pointing to the carbon-3 and carbon-4 bond. That's it. That's all it's saying. Now, we know that the arrow is pointing from left to right, right, left, so this is the left, this is the right. We know that the arrow is pointing left to right because it's starting with carbon-3 and, car and then going to carbon-4. If it said carbon-4 to carbon-3, then the arrow would be in a different direction. But since it's going from carbon-3 to carbon-4, we are going from carbon three to carbon four. The arrow is pointing to carbon three going to carbon four. So let's draw it. So the arrow, the invisible laser beam, hits carbon three first, then hits carbon four. So carbon three is the front carbon and carbon four is the back carbon. So let's draw that. So we draw by drawing a dot. This signifies the front carbon. Oops. This signifies the front carbon. Then we draw the back carbon by drawing a circle. It's an oval. Nope. Third time? Yeah, okay, that's good enough. So then let's draw the stuff attached. Oops. Let's draw the stuff attached to the front carbon. So the front carbon, we have an ethyl group. So this is an ethyl group. And we start from this carbon, we go straight up. So the ethyl group is pointing straight up. And then we have a methyl group that's on a wedge. And since we're going from left to right, wedges are always on the right-hand side of the Newman projection. So here we go. This is a methyl group. And then we have a hydrogen here. Sweet. Now let's look at the back carbon. For the back carbon, we have an ethyl group right here. Since we start from this carbon, we go straight down. The ethyl group is going straight down. And by the way, if you don't know what I'm doing here, please watch my last videos. It'll really help. Okay, so this is an ethyl group, and then we have two hydrogens here. 
Oops. Didn't know what I did wrong. Okay, there we go. That's our Newman projection. Now to play Russian Roulette. If you don't know what Russian Roulette is, it's a fun game if you hate organic chemistry. You basically shoot yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I have dark humor. Um, so here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna rotate the groups attached to the front carbon or the back carbon, which one, whichever is easier for you, then identify which Newton projection has the least amount of interactions by looking at the molecule, the size of the molecule, and the position. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna rotate the back carbon because it's easier, because there are less functional groups on there, less bigger groups. And we're gonna move it one position forward for every Newman projection. So let's let's clarify, let's see what's going on. So this is our Newman projection we just drew, right in the last slide. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this molecule, this ethyl group here, to the next position. This hydrogen is gonna go here, and this hydrogen is gonna go here. So we're basically spinning that barrel of the pistol, the revolver, okay? And we're loading the bullets into the next position. So now the ethyl group is here, the hydrogen's here, and the hydrogen's here. All the green ones left stay the same, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it again. We're gonna move this ethyl group to the next orange position. We're gonna move this hydrogen to the next orange position. And we're gonna move this hydrogen to this next orange position. So now this one would be here, right? So that's what I drew here. And the hydrogen would be uh, here and here. And that's what I did. And the green ones stay the same. So all I just did is move the orange pieces, the orange molecules, the ones written in orange, to the next position, to the next orange spot for each Newman projection. Okay? Now you have to identify which projection has the least amount of interactions? So let's look at this one first, the first one. We have an ethyl group. We have a methyl group here, and we have an ethyl group here. So notice that we have an interaction, a gauche interaction between an ethyl group and a methyl group. We have an anti here, but that does not matter because gauche beats the anti. Okay, it's a gauche has a higher energy state. So it beats anti. So we have a gauche, so let me write that out. We have a gauche interaction between a ethyl group and a methyl group, okay? So let's do this one, the second one here. We have a gauche interaction between two ethyl groups and we have an anti-interaction between ethyl and methyl. The anti does not matter because we have a gauche interaction and gauche will beat an anti. So only focus on the gauche reaction here. We have a gauche interaction between two ethyl groups. So let's write that out. So gauche between two ethyl groups. Okay, now let's look at here. Here we have a gauche interaction between an ethyl and an ethyl and an ethyl and a methyl. We have too much gauche happening, okay? So this is not gonna be the answer because we have too much. We're looking for the least amount of interactions to identify the lowest energy state. There are too many interactions happening. We have an ethyl, ethyl interaction and an ethyl-methyl interaction. Two gauche interactions compared to one gauche interaction here and a one gauche interaction here. So this is automatically out, okay? So now you're gonna compare this one and this one. Which one is gonna win? Which one has the lowest amount of interactions? Well, now you have to look at the molecule size. A methyl group is smaller than an ethyl group, okay? Compared to two ethyl groups, right? So we have two big groups. So we have two big groups because ethyl groups are big, compared to one big group, which is the ethyl group, and one small group, which is the methyl. So this would be the methyl right here, because methyls are smaller than ethyls. So since that the methyl group is smaller than the ethyl group, and we have a gauche interaction between ethyl and methyl group, 
this is going to be the lowest energy state right here. This is going to be our answer right here. This right here is our answer. Once again, because the ethyl group, so we have a Gauche interaction between two ethyl groups. Ethyl groups, the two ethyl groups are pretty big molecules, okay? Compared to a Gauche interaction between one ethyl and one methyl. The methyl group is smaller than an ethyl group. So we have a Gauche interaction between an ethyl and a methyl, and that is why this is the winner, because this is a lower interaction. We have a molecule that's smaller. Okay? So now, here's what we're going to do. To identify the higher energy state, we need to draw the eclipse conformations. So what we're going to do is take the new one projection we just drew and squish in the adjacent molecules together. Then identify the projection that has the most interactions by comparing the size and position. This will be your highest energy state. So here we have what we just drew, the lowest, you know, the lower energy states here. All you're going to do, it's super simple, squish these molecules together. So squish these uh, uh, functional groups together. Okay, so I squish these together, so that's what we have here. We squish these together, so that's what we have here. And we squish these together, so that's what we have there. So you do that again for this one. We squish these together, so we have this. We squish these together, so we have this. And we squish these together, so we have this. And then once again, we squish these together, so we have that. These ones to this, and we squish these ones to that. And once again, these is coming from this. This is what we drew, okay? This is what we just rotated around. So now we have to identify which one has the most interactions going on. So we automatically, we have a hydrogen here and an ethyl group here. This does not count, right? Because we have a hydrogen. We don't want that. We also have hydrogens here. We don't care. So we have an ethyl methyl here. Ethyl methyl. Here, we have an ethyl hydrogen. We have a hydrogen, so we don't care about this. So we take this out. Take that out immediately. We don't care. Ethyl hydrogen, we don't care. Methyl hydrogen, we don't care. So they're all too far apart. We, that's good. This is going to be nothing, okay? So all, we automatically have no good interactions. What here? We have an ethyl ethyl. We have a methyl hydrogen, which is nothing because you have a hydrogen. And we have a hydrogen hydrogen, which is nothing. So we have an ethyl ethyl here. And since ethyl groups are bigger than methyl groups, this is going to be the winner. Right here. This will be the highest energy conformation because there's these, we have these two big molecules that are interacting with each other. They're repelling each other, which is releasing a lot of high energy, right? Compared to this one, where we have a methyl and an ethyl here, yeah, they're both big groups, but the methyl is smaller, right? So it's taking up less space. It's going to repel less than the ethyl group. So that is the answer. Hopefully that makes more sense. What I'm going to do for the next video is put more practice problems, just in case if you're still lost in this video. Hopefully you're not. Hopefully I did a good job. But if, you, if you're still lost, don't worry. I'll make another video. So until next time, later.